Good morning. Welcome. Oh my life, you would not believe the palaver that has been I'm trying to record this for you today. Oh, as you can see, I'm now sat on my living room floor because I started in my study and uh, I got interrupted because a dance class needed to happen via Zoom in the conservatory, which uh, just comes off my study. Um, I have, then I realised I've got all sorts of guff going on around in the house. So I had to tidy a place and there we go. Anyway, it's life, isn't it? There we go. Ironically, somewhat, um, today I want to talk about grace. Um, I was inspired because Macaulay is, I don't know if any of you listen to the uh, Priory, um, Priory Online services, <clears throat> you can see the recordings of them on this uh, this YouTube channel. And uh, um, Macaulay's been talking about grace and he emailed uh, us to say, what do we think uh, grace is? What, what does grace mean to us? Um, and grace is one of my favourite things. Um, lots of you will have, if you've heard me preach, will have uh, possibly heard me preach about grace. Um, and it's just, grace is one of those words that just fills me with, mm, yeah, just niceness. <laughs> I can't explain it very well. And I'm aware I look like a bit of a burk doing that then. Um, <laughs> but uh, grace is one of those things that is just absolutely fantastic. Difficult to put into words, perhaps, but without God's grace, I have no idea where I would be. This is one of my favourite books uh, about grace. It's by Philip Yancey, and you can still get it um, now, although you can see our copy is quite yellowed. Um, and I'm, it's the kind of book that you can pick up and put down um, and read very easily because it's full of stories um, about where Philip Yancey has had uh, happenings or conversations that have either been full of grace in unexpected places or lacking grace in unexpected places and everything in between. So um, I highly recommend that book to you if you want to get hold of that and read it. That's um, a, a good read and I'm going to read something from it later. Um, but first of all, Another book I'd recommend to you, the Bible. I'm going to read uh, from Ephesians chapter 2 and it's entitled Made Alive in Christ. As for you, this is following on from a previous conversation, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace that you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace that you have been saved, through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. There's the acronym, isn't there, for grace, uh, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. But put more simply than that still, I don't get what I deserve. And that's the reason I can sit here today. I don't get what I deserve from God. I am far from perfect. I remember hearing a story uh, when I was a, ooh, 
Ooh, student, I must have been at Cliff College, Stephen Mosdale told it. It's a true story um, of a, a student who went on mission and was asked to, uh, to, to work with another church uh, and was asked to give her testimony. And she gave her testimony and she told uh, tales of awful things that had happened to her and how she'd um, come through and, and become a Christian and, and turned her life around. And after the, the service or event or whatever it was, uh, Stephen said he went up to her and said, thank you for sharing your testimony. It was quite incredible. I had no idea that, that all of that was in your past. And the girl said to him, well, actually it wasn't, but I felt that my story was too uninteresting. So I felt I had to make it more interesting. My story isn't that interesting, really. But trust me, there are more than enough mistakes in my story to mean that I don't deserve the riches of God. But because Christ has paid the price and because God has such grace that he shows to us, shows to me, shows to you, I don't get what I deserve. Instead, I get to live in the light and the life and the love of God. That's grace. Yancey finishes his book like this. And it's all right, it's not a spoiler because it's, as I said, it's the kind of book you can dip in and out of. Bill Moyer's documentary film on the hymn Amazing Grace includes a scene filmed in Wembley Stadium in London. Various musical groups, mostly rock bands, had gathered together in celebration of the changes in South Africa. And for some reason, the promoters scheduled an opera singer, Jesse Norman, as the closing act. The film cuts back and forth between scenes of the unruly crowd in the stadium and Jesse Norman being interviewed. For 12 hours, groups like Guns N' Roses have blasted the crowd through banks of speakers, riling up fran fans already high on do booze and dope. The crowd yells for more curtain calls and the rock groups oblige. Meanwhile, Jessie Norman sits in her dressing room discussing Amazing Grace with Moyers. The hymn was written, of course, by John Newton, a coarse, cruel slave trader. He first called out to God in the midst of a storm that nearly threw him overboard. Newton came to see the light only gradually, continuing to ply his trade even after his conversion. He wrote the song How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds whilst waiting in an African harbour for a shipment of slaves. Later, though, he, denounced, he renounced his profession, became a minister and joined William Wilberforce in the fight against slavery. John Newton never lost sight of the depths from which he had been lifted. He never lost sight of grace. When he wrote that saved a wretch like me, he meant those words with all his heart. In the film, Jesse Norman tells Bill Moyers that Newton may have borrowed an old tune sung by the slaves themselves, redeeming the song just as he had been redeemed. Finally, the time comes for her to sing. A single circle of light follows Norman, a majestic African-American woman wearing a flowing African dashiki as she strolls on stage. No backup band, no musical instruments, just Jessie. The crowd stirs restless. Few recognise the opera diva. A voice yells for more guns and roses and others take up the cry. The scene is getting ugly. Then alone, a cappella, Jessie Norman begins to sing very slowly. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. A remarkable thing happens in Wembley Stadium that night. 70,000 raucous fans falls silent before her aria of grace. By the time Norman reaches the second verse, "'Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, "'and grace my fears relieved,' 
the soprano has the crowd in her hands. By the time she reaches the third voice, verse, "'Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home." Several thousand fans are singing along, digging back in far and nearly lost memories for words they heard long ago. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright, shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Jessie Norman later confessed that she had no idea what power descended on Wembley Stadium that night. I think I know. The world thirsts for grace. And when grace descends, the world falls silent before it. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. God bless you and keep you, make his face shine on you, be gracious to you and give you his peace and grace. And I will see you next time. Bye bye.